if an F-111 didn't do a dump and burn, there was a lot of disappointment in the crowd. You could probably call it the F-111's party trick. The piston-engined Avro Lincoln entered service in 1946, but just two years later, the RAAF sought a jet-powered replacement. The high-altitude Canberra bomber went on to serve Australia for 30 years. After an American U-2 spy plane flying at 70,000 feet was shot down, it became clear Air Force required a supersonic aircraft capable of flying under the radar. The aircraft chosen was the winner of the US Tactical Fighter Experimental Program, the General Dynamics F-111 Aardvark. The F-11 was certainly a revolutionary aeroplane. It was one of the most complicated aeroplanes ever built. In 1963, the F-111 was still a paper aeroplane and had never flown. Australia was the first and only foreign purchaser. The F-111C was built to Australian specifications with longer wings and a stronger undercarriage. The F-111 uses a swing wing design. With the wings swept back, the aircraft could reach two and a half times the speed of sound, making it the fastest aircraft ever operated by the RAAF. In the event of an emergency, the entire crew module is ejected from the aircraft. It was the first production aircraft powered by after-burning turbofans. Automatic terrain following radar allowed it to fly at extremely low altitudes in all types of weather. The F-11 was an amazing aeroplane, especially at low level. And it was the only aeroplane that I ever flew that you never really cancelled for weather. The first F-111C was handed over in September 1968, but problems with the swing wing mechanism delayed delivery to Australia. In 1973, the long-awaited F-111s were finally accepted and ferried to Australia. The United States Air Force used to call the F-111 the Aardvark, which in Afrikaans means Earth Pig. Of course, being Australians, Aardvark was far too hard to us, so we just had to shorten it to Pig. Over its service life, the F-111C was transformed from a dumb bomber to a precision strike platform. Harpoon missiles made it a formidable maritime strike platform, and standoff missiles could be launched from a range of 75 kilometres. Between 1994 and 1999, the avionics were upgraded from analogue to digital. The work required the whole cockpit to be stripped down and rebuilt. In 1998, when the USAF retired their following from service, that had very significant impacts for the Royal Australian Air Force. It meant that we were the sole operator of what was probably the most complicated aeroplane in the world. Fuel tanks fitted every nook and cranny of the aircraft and deterioration of fuel tank sealant became apparent soon after delivery. In 1977, a fleet-wide sealant removal and replacement program began. Over the next 23 years, hundreds of maintenance staff were required to work inside fuel tanks, a work practice that ultimately caused significant health problems and, tragically, deaths. By 2003, the cost of sustaining the F-111 led to a decision to retire the fleet. The last F-111 to touch down in December 2010 was A8-125, the first to land in Australia 37 years before. A complicated, amazing aeroplane, but also an amazing capability.